Fortsetzung von Disney Orlando Mehr Wildtiere in Treasure Island The cool part about this is it's not a strange trick we thought up at lunch hour one day. This is really what you see Sariyama's doing in the wild if you're lucky enough to spot one catching his food. <laughs> and I mentioned that uh, our bird's evolutionary tree back there. We don't know if uh, dinosaurs purred, but this, this bird does purr when it catches, when it catches its food. Ouch, good job. All right, I think our little lizard here is getting nice and tender, so we'll go for the hardest part of the show, which is getting the lizard back. Because <laughs> even though Bam Bam doesn't fly very well, she can't fly. If I try to steal it, she'll fly to the other side of the island and start a slam fest over there. So, okay, there's a tree back by the door. The door's gonna open, cross her fingers. She's got another one right off stage. Yes, we did it. That was Bam Bam, our scary owl. And I rescue Bard Owl, named for the striped or barred pattern on his chest. And that bird's name is Owlix. Owlix Trebeek. Take dumb jokes for 200. Okay. Now, Owlix, again, Bard Owl, very common around here. If you guys are staying with us on Disney property on vacation, keep your eyes open at night. You're very likely going to see one. And the first thing I noticed about Owlix, speaking of seeing, are his eyes. Beautiful brown eyes, and be patient, he'll look at you. They're just not very intelligent for being a bird, but don't worry. We're not picking on owls. I think we humans are a little biased when it comes to intelligence. Uh, owls might not be as smart as us, but is your eyesight just as good at nighttime? Again, from the South American rainforest. And uh, uh, rainforest, as we know, is disappearing. Recycling is a good way to help protect habitat everywhere. Uh, first of all, if you recycle your paper, we don't have to cut down trees to replace it. Uh, what, what's better for the rainforest animals, though, is recycling aluminum, because aluminum is made from stuff called bauxite. And if we don't uh, have to uh, uh, cut down trees, take the bauxite, to make more aluminum, we can just recycle the stuff we've already used. You can use aluminum an infinite amount of times, as long as we recycle it. Now, uh, we like to, yeah, he's ready to go now. Go ahead. We got some new benches today. And he's, he's a little reluctant to fly over. The recycled benches, by the way. Now, uh, see how he, boy, he's gone. If you didn't know he was up there, you wouldn't be able to see him. But lots of parrots do have bright colors. And some folks have asked us if parrots are poisonous, because a lot of animals advertise their poison with those bright colors. Well, parrots aren't poisonous. Their colors are a little more like a peacock. Uh, they don't have the display quite like a peacock does, but those colors are supposed to... The Samuel has long skinny legs and a really sharp pointy beak. So what do you think he needs? Fish. Fish, you betcha. Samuel loves fish, and he's a Maguari stork, native to South America. And you may not have known he was a Maguari stork, but you knew he ate fish. So whenever you do see a bird you can't identify, just remember, who cares? Right? You don't have to know what it's called to appreciate how beautiful and important it is. Now this type of bird's becoming rare. They're losing their habitat. We spoke a little bit about rainforest. This guy doesn't come from the rainforest, but humans are taking his habitat. We're a very successful species of animal, which is fine. But we have become successful very recently. If you think about what our world parrots in our show, uh, uh, just a caution though, they're wild animals. Even though they might be born in captivity, having a wild animal in your house is very difficult, and I do not recommend parrots as pets. I've worked with them for many years, and you're not gonna find one in my house. Just remember, they fit to your front door, that doesn't mean they're going to be a good pet. They can bite hard, scream loud, might have the uh, curiosity of a two-year-old human. Some of these big ones, if you take care of them right, might live 30 years, which means having a two-year-old for 30 years. <laughs> Catch my dress up. Anyway, they're definitely interesting animals. And uh, parrots are kind of famous for their ability to imitate humans. And so we'll see if Katie will do a little talking for us. Katie, can you say hello? Hello. Thank you. <laughs> we'll try to hit the microphone. Can you say hi? Hi. Thank you. Now put your wings up and show them up pretty hard. Good girl. Katie, what's this mean? Pretty bird. Yeah, she's a pretty bird. She's a very pretty bird. Now, she also is a wild animal, like all the birds in her show, except for the chicken. So uh, the way we train her to perform is by positive reinforcement. We always give them little treats. Uh, we like to make training fun and interesting for the birds, and that way they enjoy doing it. And besides, Ow. if you, uh, too fast. If you ever try to make a parrot do anything, they bite. Ow. And that's what I say when she bites. Ow. So we don't want that to happen. <laughs> we try to make training a lot of fun. Lots of their favorite treats. Grapes, sunflower seeds, peanuts. I don't know. Katie, what's your favorite food? Cracker. What's your favorite food? Cracker. <laughs> Not true, but you did make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> One more laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Good 
good job. Now, while we're at it, she's, uh, we don't normally do these, but she's learned a couple of fun things. Uh, Discover Alan uh, is, is, is an island, obviously, so she learned this one. Rock the boat. There you go. <laughs> and to show that parents don't understand what they're saying, Katie, are you a good girl or are you a rug rat? Rug rat. There you go. She's a rug rat. Okay. So, obviously, she doesn't know what she's talking about, but she's a fun bird to have on our show. We're going to let her tell you one last thing. She can also say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. There you go. All right, Katie, I'm just going to have a Good job. Beautiful. We'll see if you can catch this. Oh, good try. Well, you know, they say uh, most birds of prey are only successful 10% of the time anyway. That may not be true with Hudson, though, because Harris hawks are the only hawk that hunts for their food in groups or packs. And uh, uh, one study, one study says that Harris hawks are successful hunting about 10% of the time when they hunt on their own. But if they hunt in groups of about five birds, they're successful 50% of the time. So Harris hawks really benefit by hunting in groups. And one of the interesting parts about the way they hunt is they'll hunt with completely unrelated animals. Most animals, including humans, just like to help out their kin, but uh, Harris hawks will help other folks out. Now, I forgot to warn you, this is the part where we make sure you leave with a different hairstyle. It's in our contract. So we're going to have Hudson flying back and forth over your heads, and we'll see if you get a close look. Right. And I also should have said, if you duck, he flies lower. <laughs> don't, don't bother. <laughs> and another reason not to be afraid of, uh, of uh, hawks, and predators in general. Predators, are, as I'm sure you've heard, are more afraid of us than we, than we are of them. But this bird weighs one pound. So if you have a see a hawk flying over your house, don't grab the dogs and the cats and the children. Hawks aren't going to take your kids even if you wanted to. So uh, again, that bird weighs one pound. A big red-tailed hawk might weigh three pounds. So uh, rodents are on their menu. Now this is a daytime hunter again. Uh, hawks hawks uh, hunt at nighttime because that's when their physical adaptations help them out. Hawks are daytime hunters. We again we. Let Well, they will, and again, just like I said, you can never say never about anything. Typically, typically a hawk that will do that is a first-year hawk. Yeah. 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 I would love to see one in the wild.
leg up in the air. Shrink us, are you? I'll be right with you to stop looking at yourself. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, everybody say hi to Snickers. Before you get some lunch. Wow. Well, uh, my friends. I'm going to get wrapped around me here, this, this beautiful snake. Uh, she is considered by most in the field to be A number one, okay, the single longest kind of snake on the planet. This is the record for her. Uh, she has a python, she has a seven-year-old person. Uh, the biggest one of these things I ever found, just, just for a little uh, idea, is the record is 33 feet. Two years down the road, this, this thing's in your living room craving a water buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Which really, you think I'm kidding about that? In the wild, when these snakes get <laughs> when these snakes get large, they eat things like gazelle and that deer and antelope and even young water buffalo. That's what's on the menu. She's already bred up some chickens. Und sagt Tschüss zur Insel.